Welcome back. It's Monday, so we have another Wise Guys segment for you. Joining me from the University of Illinois, physics professor Paul Quiat. And Paul, today's lesson money. involves money. money. Uh, I'm excited. Yeah, today's money. So, of course, <laughs> everyone wants to make money, and some people need to make money quite literally. They need to fabricate mm -hmm. money. And the question is, how do you make it in a way that no one else can copy it? And, of course, the important thing is it just needs to be more expensive to copy than the value of the currency. So if it cost $50 to make a copy of a $20 bill, you wouldn't do it, right? And so one thing you could do, one way that you know real money, real money, real money differs from monopoly money is that uh, real money sometimes can use different colors. And so there's lots of different currencies that do that. Uh, I just happen to have a few here. There's a euro, there's a Swiss franc, there's uh, money from the Czech Republic, and you see they're multicolored, right? So that's harder to print when you do that. Now, if you look at the, uh, you know, U.S. dollar, it looks pretty green. That's why we talk about green bucks, right? Uh, but there are colors that we can't necessarily see, and so we could also use those. And if we go to the first slide, just a reminder to everyone that light is a wave and that it has different colors, of course, and the longer the uh, wavelength, the redder the color, the shorter the wavelength, the, uh, the bluer the color, and the more energy in the particles and the photons that call that. And we also talked previously about this phenomenon called fluorescence, which is the next slide, which is that you can uh, direct light onto some materials and it'll be excited, it will absorb the photon, and it'll kind of lose some of the energy rattling down through these high energy levels and then finally make a final jump. And the photon that comes off has less energy than you started. And so, for example, we could do that looking at shining ultraviolet light on something and then we can get something that's in the visible instead. So if we come back to us, uh, in fact, that does happen. So I have here just some... Uh, uh, again, dollar bills, and so if I, I, this is a little UV lamp, and if I put this across here, I will, sh we should be able to see there, this bright green stripe that's right there. Okay, I don't know if you can actually see it. I can see it. I can see it very brilliant. And we'll show in, in just a, a slide in just a second. If I look at a, a, at a, uh, a five instead, there's a bright blue stripe mm. instead. Yeah. So if we look actually on the next slide, so I have the U.S. Uh, currencies that ha you can actually see the stripes, the blue on the five and, and the green on the 20. So that's uh, how you know it's real. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. If it's real, it's going to have that stripe that's going to fluoresce when you put it under ultraviolet light. That's how sometimes they check things, whether or not they have ultraviolet light. And uh, in fact, we could even ask, you might notice, see, I have this lovely... Uh, Looks amazing. Lovely, Did you make that yourself? No, uh, <laughs> it, was, it was a gift, actually. So we can oh, ask, is it real? And I don't know if you can zoom in and you'll be able to see that, in fact, it's... Uh, so this is a $50 bill, and in fact, it's got a stripe. Uh, I don't know if you can see the stripe or not. I see it, yep. Yep, okay, so yeah, there's a bright stripe that's right right over, right over there. Um, okay. Right here. Right there. I see it. Great, okay, so good. Genuine, genuine $50 bill, maybe. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, the next slide actually shows that other currencies also use this, so not just U.S. currencies. So uh, that Korean currency has that bright stripe, and on the right we have uh, Indian rupees, and they have these little, little colored regions. Uh, if you zoom in on that, which is the next slide, we'll see that actually those are really you know, quite multiple colors that are coming wow. on them when you shine uh, ultraviolet light on them, which is pretty cool. Uh, if we come back to us, another way that we can uh, put in something that's hard to counterfeit is called a watermark. That's where you have... That's where you have something that's sort of inside the paper that you can see if you hold it up to light. And uh, our currencies have that. And so I have just a, uh, a $5 bill, and if I look on this side... If I look on this side, we can see that there's this uh, five that's kind of showing showing through mm, again. I don't know if it's showing I up there, that. but if, if you have an actual it's five right dollar bill, yep, have an actual five dollar bill and you hold it up to the light, you'll be able to see that. And again, going to the other slides, uh, other slides, other currencies also do that. And so uh, on the right hand side, we're showing with a light behind, and there's a little dim head that's in the in this kind of empty space. In both of these places, there's a dim face. Uh, that's showing. And so other, all, all kind of other currency use watermarks instead. Another way that we can make uh, currency harder to make a copy of is we just make it very complicated. And we have very, very fine structure in the actual printing. And so if we go to the next slide, uh, all kind of currencies have that. This is a 10 euro at the moment. And we're going to zoom in a, 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 again and then make that a little bit bigger. And then if we zoom in even one more time on this, we can see that there's this very, very fine very fine printing. There's even like lettering if you were to look at this wow. very carefully. And so that would be very, very difficult detailed. to just try and manufacture <laughs> right. on our own, right? And you might say, well, 
great, why can't we just use a great printer that can copy that? And that that would be a real easy way to do that. And it turns out there's a pretty good reason for that. And uh, again, people to call out their own money, but if you look at like a $20 bill, there's these little yellow, little 20s on it, uh, for example. And if it's a 10, it's little 10s. If it's a 5, it's little 5s. And what those are, if you put this into a printer or like a photocopier, it won't photocopy. It'll give you an error. And what's oh. going on, if we go to the next slide, is this thing called the, uh, the Urion constellation. So it has these little dots. The ones are important. It's only the zeros that are important that make up this little five uh, star constellation. It has a whole bunch of them. And if the printer sees that, it gets, gets a warning that, no, we're not supposed to be copying that. If we go to the next slide, it just shows a whole bunch of other currencies that all have that. Uh, in different places. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to see, but for example, in the euro on the upper right, there's little uh, circles to the, just to the left of the curve. Uh, above Gandhi's head, there's some little uh, circles. Those are the constellations. So all, all many, many other bills that use that. And uh, that actually made it quite difficult to prepare for this show because right. I couldn't copy many things. Right, because yes. the printer kept uh, saying, no, I don't want to do that. You're doing something mm -hmm. illegal. So we will uh, we'll come back to money Absolutely. next time we get together because there are some other super cool tricks that are used to make it hard Very cool. to make your own money. All righty. Well, thanks so much for being here, Paul. We always appreciate you. You're, you're, you're rich. <laughs> we see that. No, I'm just kidding. All right. Well, we're definitely looking forward to the next time you come in. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thanks, guys. All righty. We're going to send it right on over to Jacob for a look at the forecast.